Okay, now to a new trend among office workers across the country. The inspiration comes from high school graduates, as you know. Yeah, burned out employees are taking a gap year or a mini sabbatical to recharge. And joining us now to talk about this workplace trend is business analyst Carl Gould. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so can you break down for us what is a gap year in this sense and are employers letting their employees take a year off? Yeah, I mean, we know it as the year between high school and college, yeah. college and uh, your career or in between jobs, but now people are doing it during or while they're uh, c conducting their current work. How do you know if your job's going to be there? It seems like a big <laughs> risk. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people take a gap year. It's called unemployment. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and that is a danger. I mean, we, are, we happen to be in the most competitive work environment, and, you know, someone else will be sitting in your seat during that time. So, so there is a danger of that for sure. Okay, so if someone is lucky enough to get this extended period off, what should they be doing before they head back to work? So first off, during the pandemic, we advised that if you're an employee, tell your employer what you want. Mm -hmm. And the number one request was flexibility. That's what they wanted. Employers listened. Because it's so competitive, they're now making, they're offering this. So if you, if you ask for it and you get a sabbatical, this is a time to take care of a loved one, This work on personal care, um, upskill yourself and get certifications mm -hmm. that will make you more, and licenses yeah. that will make you more, um, uh, you know, marketable in your job and more valuable to the company. Yeah, find a hobby along, along the way. Or, exactly. Or and People are doing a lot of side gate, side hustles yeah. and, and a lot of uh, a lot of project work as well. Yeah, but some uh, mini sabbaticals they do come um, with a warning, like in the case of layoffs, of course, yeah. and that adds another layer of stress, no doubt. Right. What's the best way to make the use of your time when you're unemployed? Besides the the, the mm -hmm. things that you just mentioned, like I I wasn't working for another year and a half. I wrote a book. What are some best ways to do? Yeah, that? so. So the, you, you can, if you're taking a sabbatical, you could still ta stay in touch with your employer or with the person that, um, or with the person that's, that's handling your job at that particular time. So it doesn't have to be a, a clear cut. I mean, technology has afforded you these, you know, this ability to stay somewhat connected. I mean, there's off the grid and there's off the grid. You yeah. don't have to be fully off the grid on a sabbatical. Okay, so let's talk about PTO. Yeah. I say PTO stands for prepare the others because I won't be there, <laughs> but <laughs> the U.S. is actually lagging behind when it comes to giving people paid time off. Why is that so? Well, there's other countries uh, in Europe, uh, we hear about it a lot, they get six and eight weeks of paid vacation, yeah. but there are companies that are stepping up and doing this more. Netflix is one as a good example, where you can, and there's other uh, companies that are giving unlimited PTO. So essentially, Ooh. if you're getting your job done, if you're hitting your goals and your objectives, you can take all the time off that you want. And certain jobs uh, lend itself to that. So, Yeah. Because for the longest, I thought we have to move to one of those Scandinavian countries. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like give you like six months vacation. Make yourself so indispensable to your employer that they would actually be okay allowing you to take that time and they would want you back. All right. All right. Okay. Sounds Nicole, like a plan. you hearing this? <laughs> Our boss, all right. Thank you, Carl. Really appreciate you joining us today. Yeah. Thanks.